A year ago, the rebels in Syria seemed to have the upper hand. But something's changed. The rebels say Syrian government forces are being bolstered by a neighboring power. Iran هم تدخل الأجنبي في سوريا وهذا دليلنا الوحيد والقاطع ولا يمكن لأي أحد من أن ينكره. Soldiers from Iran's Revolutionary Guards are on the ground and helping turn the tide of the war. When this secret footage shot by an Iranian fell into rebel hands, the extent of Iran's clandestine role in Syria was exposed for the first time. If there's one country that is interfering in Syria, it's Iran. This is the story of two men, a young filmmaker and a veteran fighter. Both of them caught up in a vicious conflict on foreign soil. It's a story of life and death and the hidden reality of a battle fought in the shadows. Iran denies sending military forces to support Assad, but this film is proof of the Ayatollah's secret war in Syria. Government airbase near Damascus in Syria. Boarding the helicopter flight is this man, Hadi Bahbani. He's a 30 year old filmmaker from Iran. It's his second trip to Syria and he's on a sensitive assignment. He's making a film on behalf of Iran's elite revolutionary guards. Aleppo in northern Syria. This section of the war-ravaged city is under the control of the Assad regime. And here is Hadi again, in footage filmed by one of his colleagues. But filming in Syria's civil war is a hazardous occupation. In September, a group of Syrian rebels contacted the international media saying they had captured a video camera after a battle. They said it contained footage which proved their long-stated allegation that Iranian forces were on the ground in Syria and supporting the Assad regime. After burning their own logo onto the pictures, the rebels put the captured footage in a secret place on YouTube. They also said they'd recovered a special identity card belonging to an Iranian battlefield commander. It allowed him to carry weapons and travel with armed guards anywhere in Syria. Such permits, the rebels said, are only issued to important regime personnel. Ismail Haidari, born in Amul, northern Iran, is a veteran commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guards. But were the rebels telling the truth, or was this an elaborate hoax? Broadcasting house in London, the headquarters of the BBC. A small team of journalists is examining all of the captured video. It seems to have been shot in northern Syria over a period of about three to four days in late August this year. Accents, uniforms, equipment and local landmarks have all been analysed by experts from the BBC's Persian and Arabic services. 
everything in the footage points to its authenticity. We've heard a lot that Iran's Revolutionary Guards are in Syria fighting, but we haven't seen any proof for that, well, till now. When I watched this footage, I was convinced that this is real. I mean, the way these people talk, the way they behave, the way they look, and also some confidential information I got from sources in Iran, it all told me this is real. This is the first time all the material shot by Iranian filmmaker Hadi Bahbani has been pieced together. It's likely that it was never intended for public broadcast, but was some sort of internal Iranian Revolutionary Guards project. Because when you watch the footage, it becomes obvious that despite their repeated denials, Iran is secretly playing a critical role in helping turn the tide of the war back in favor of the Assad regime. The captured footage starts in some sort of pro-regime military facility in Aleppo. Hadi Bahvani is now behind the camera. These signs, written in both Arabic and Farsi, the Iranian language, warn people not to take any photographs on their mobile phones. But such restrictions do not seem to apply to Hadi Bahbani. These soldiers are all Iranians, as are the troops and the cleric in this prayer hall. And this is a communications room, a very sensitive location. The radio operator is Iranian too. Bahbani tries to engage him in conversation, but the man seems very uncomfortable being filmed. The access Hadi Bahbani had to film Iranian operations in Syria is remarkable. Only a trusted insider of some sort would be allowed the free reign he seems to enjoy. Bahbani may have been a member of the guards, or at least part of their auxiliary forces known as the Basij. But just who are the revolutionary guards, and why are they helping the regime in Syria? Following the Islamic Revolution in 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini became Iran's supreme leader. The Revolutionary Guards were set up to defend the new regime. When Saddam Hussein's Iraq invaded a year later, the Revolutionary Guard proved themselves exceptionally loyal and brave fighters. Throughout the eight-year conflict, Syria was the only Arab country to stand by Tehran. It's something the Iranian leadership has never forgotten. As for the Revolutionary Guards, their power and influence has grown to such an extent that they're almost a state within a state. It's not just a battlefield force. It is a force which is also involved in logistics, intelligence, economic projects, major infrastructure and engineering projects. So it supports the goals of the Islamic Republic, but it also has its own specific goals to extend its own economic and political influence. The Revolutionary Guard have a special branch called the Quds Force, named after the Islamic term for Jerusalem, which the regime in Tehran says it ultimately wants to liberate. A kind of Iranian cross between the CIA and the special forces, the Quds are so powerful they effectively run their own covert foreign policy. And right now their main concern is helping Assad win the civil war in Syria. Iran is propping up the Assad regime. It's Iran's main ally, really its only Arab ally, and its means of projecting power to the Levant. If Assad falls, uh, Iran's foreign policy objectives will be constrained. So it's doing everything it can to keep Assad in power by means of finances, uh, money, training, intelligence, and equipment. Back on the ground in Syria, and Hadi Barbani is now attached to a group of Revolutionary Guards military advisors from the Quds Force, who are based in southeastern Aleppo. In this footage, they're taking Hadi on a tour of the city's frontline areas. <laughs> His guides seem keen to show off the local danger zones. 
اینجا ما ممنوع هستیم ولی خب الان به خاطر کل روی تو که فیلم بگیرید تصویر مستند تر بشه حلب و راموسه بعد مطار و اینا رو بگیر The two men in the front of the jeep are veteran Revolutionary Guards fighters. But Hardy, the cameraman, sounds increasingly concerned. Eventually, the three Iranians pull up at a house in a suburb of Aleppo called Zahabia. It's where this particular unit of Iranian Revolutionary Guards are living. The man sitting on the right-hand side is Ismail Haidari, whose ID was later captured by the rebels. An experienced Quds Force commander, Haidari says he has done six tours of duty in Syria in the past year and a half alone. He will be the main character in Hadi Baghbani's film. <laughs> Relaxed and humorous, Haidari nevertheless has a very ideological view of the Syrian conflict and Iran's role in it. دولت سوریه در مقابل مردم سوریه است نه چنین چیزی نیست یعنی خیلی از مردم هم این اعتقاد دارن که جبهه الان سوریه جبهه اسلام در مقابل کفره جبهه حق در مقابل باطله چرا که ما عقیدمون که جبهه اینور حقا به این جهت که جبهه اینور مدافعش حضرت آقا است جبهه اینور مدافعش سید حسن نصرالله است جبهه اینور بچه ایران هستن حزب الله هستش مجاهدین عراقی هستن و جاهای دیگه مجاهدین افغانی هستن اینا اومدن جبهه اونور کیه اسرائیل جبهه اونور کیه عربستان هست جبهه اونور کیه ترکیه هست جبهه اونور کیه قطر پولهای اماراتی هستش که میاد امریکا هست انگلیس هست فرانسه و کشورهای اروپایی که با اینا همخونی یعنی این نشون میده که جبهه ما جبهه حقه The footage shows these Iranians are a tight knit group The leader is Ismail Haidari and this is his right hand man His name is Yahya and Yahya seems to be the joker in the pack he appears religious, but he's always singing, laughing, and clowning around. Both of these men speak Arabic. Neither are particularly young. But that, say the experts, is exactly the point. The Quds Force uh, officers that have gone into Syria are there for training, basically. So they're experienced fighters. They've seen action on the ground in Iraq. Many of them have trained uh, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon and train Hezbollah uh, in Iran itself. So they're elite, uh, and an elite in the sense of uh, experience. So it's not surprising to me that many of them are older. One of the things these Iranian military advisors are trying to do is to win the hearts and minds of local people in the areas they control. Ismail Haidari is openly critical of his Syrian army allies for their attitudes to other Syrians. اسیرایی که میریم اینا ماشین های ارتششون با سرعت میرن بی اعتنای به مردم بلده ولی ما میریم مسیر آروم تر میریم یعنی اگه مسیر گر... مثلا گرد خاک باشه جاده خاکی باشه خیلی آروم میریم مردم گرد خاک نخورن به هر کی رسیدیم سلام میکنیم یعنی مردم با همین برخوردا به ما اعتماد کردن متاسفانه برخورد اولیه که دولت توی مقابله با کشاشت کرده چون خوب عمل نکرده کشید به اینجا و... ولی خب الحمدلله جمهوری اسلامی ایران اسلام گفتم رعفت داشته باشه ما باید اینا رو به اینا یاد بدیم it's textbook hearts and mind stuff but it hides a less respectful attitude Hardy's footage shows that another of the guardsmen's tasks, perhaps their most important, is to train and organize a new grouping known as the National Defense Force, or NDF. The Revolutionary Guards have a long history of nurturing militias across the Middle East. But it seems the NDF are not just being trained on the ground in Syria itself. Many of the friends who are working with us, we have been working with them 
آموزیده خود ما هستن تو ایران آموزش ما یعنی چون ما رو میشناسن خیلی راحت تر با ما کار میکنن و با رویات ما آشنا هستن The National Defense Force is a network of pro-Assad militias, mainly composed of Alawites, Shia Muslims and some Christians. They are loyalists, all of whom fear the consequences of a predominantly Sunni Muslim rebel victory. Yet this very makeup of the NDF may actually deepen the sectarian divide in Syria in the long run. But the Revolutionary Guards aren't just providing training. According to Haidari, their role as military advisors is a very hands-on one. For example, one of the things we do is the Shinaasai Razm. The Shinaasai Razm 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 مناطق ترددشون رو روش دوم مناطقی که تردد میکنن ماشین هاشون میره ولانیزا شبها و یا بعضی از روزها کمین میذاریم و یا مینگذاری و بونگذاری میکنیم و روش سوم هم روش دستبرده که اتفاق افتاده ما حجوم میاریم منطقی که اینا تجمع دارن یه عملیات انجام میدیم میزنیم اینا رو نابود میکنیم دوباره برمیگرد تو منطقه خود so these Iranian Revolutionary Guards are involved in hearts and minds, in training militia, and are seemingly conducting military operations. But is it working? Elliot Higgins is a weapons expert who has specialized in analyzing the many thousands of online videos that have come out of the Syrian conflict. But he says Hadi Baghbani's footage really stood out. The Iranian intervention has been quite useful for the Syrian army. They're training what looked like the National Defense Force to be a more effective fighting force. The big problem I used to see a lot in Syria is you'd have a situation where you'd have tanks driving into towns unsupported by infantry because the infantry couldn't really be trusted because they came from sunny populations and you know, that's most of the opposition is from sunny populations. So the situation you're having now is you're seeing the, more of these videos with the tanks, but now you're seeing them supported by infantry, and I believe a lot of these are more likely to be coming from the National Defence Force. <laughs> Hadi Baghbani's camera also captures the Iranians in some more relaxed moments. While most of the squad busy themselves preparing dinner, Deputy Commander Yahya is washing his clothes and he's been singing a pop song. <laughs> Realizing he's being filmed and that his conservative superiors back in Tehran might watch the footage, he literally changes his tune and starts singing a more Islamic style instead. <laughs> <laughs> At evening prayers, the group gathers together. For Yahya, it's an opportunity to crack another joke. <laughs> The sun rises over Aleppo, but this will not be a peaceful day. Reports are coming in that a force of rebel fighters is moving in on a nearby regime stronghold known as the Poultry Farm near a place called Talazan. Haydari's unit gets some reinforcements from the local NDF militia they're training. There's no considerate driving style now. This is a military emergency. The two truckloads of fighters head to the poultry farm base as fast as they can. The camera captures this reflected shot of Hadi Baghbani. 
He's in military uniform, carrying his camera in one hand and a Kalashnikov in the other. But any enthusiasm for real-life combat doesn't last. The veteran fighter Yahya is no longer making jokes. He knows what could happen next. This is no laughing matter. There are about 40 fighters now gathered in this base, including at least one other squad of Iranian military advisors. All these men know an attack is coming. Haydari and Yahya lead their squad out of the poultry farm base on a recce mission. They want to secure the right-hand flank of the battlefield. Hadi sounds unsettled. At first glance, this Iranian-led group looks well-equipped for a fight. Then Haydari spots movement on the horizon. What the Iranians can't see is that there are far more than three rebels. What you're seeing now is footage filmed by the rebels' own cameramen as their column of fighters advance towards the combat zone. They both outnumber Haydari's squad and have much heavier weapons, including a tank. The Iranians are heading into an ambush. Slicing through the cornfield and mortar rounds crashing in, the group is pinned down. Realising the danger, Yahya makes a run for it. The others try to retreat, but it's too late. These are the last images Hari Bahvani filmed. <laughs> Two days later, Revolutionary Guards Commander Ismail Ali Taqi Haidari is buried with full military honours in Iran. It's final confirmation of his important role in the Revolutionary Guards. And this is Hadi Bahbani. His body is still covered with his blood. He too has joined the ranks of Iran's martyrs from the Syrian war. He never made it home to his wife, Maryam, or three-year-old daughter. He never lived to see his film going out. Even after all this, the Revolutionary Guards continue to deny they have a military presence in Syria. The rebels think the Guards are trying to further sectarianize the conflict. Others argue it's all about geopolitics and self-interest. It's not surprising to me that in Syria, Iran has given training both to the uh, regular Syrian armed forces and to uh, paramilitary groups. And these paramilitary groups uh, may well outlast uh, the Assad regime. It's one way that Iran uh, keeps its options open. Even if Assad falls, Iran will have uh, a force 
that's committed to it, uh, that relies upon Iran for training and support uh, so that Iran can continue to maintain a presence and a group of allies in Syria. The story of Hadi Baghbani and Ismail Haidari shines a light onto Iran's covert war in Syria. But it's also a snapshot of a far wider tragedy. With more than 100,000 mostly Syrians killed so far, there's a but two more lives cut short in the human catastrophe that is Syria today. A year ago, the rebels in Syria seemed to have the upper hand. But something's changed. The rebels say Syrian government forces are being bolstered by a neighboring power. Iran هم تدخل الأجنبي في سوريا وهذا دليلنا الوحيد والقاطع ولا يمكن أي أحد من أن ينكره. Soldiers from Iran's Revolutionary Guards are on the ground and helping turn the tide of the war. When this secret footage shot by an Iranian fell into rebel hands, the extent of Iran's clandestine role in Syria was exposed for the first time. If there's one country that is interfering in Syria, it's Iran. This is the story of two men, a young filmmaker and a veteran fighter. Syrian rebels contacted the international media saying they had captured a video camera after a battle. They said it contained footage which proved their long-stated allegation that Iranian forces were on the ground in Syria and supporting the Assad regime. After burning their own logo onto the pictures, the rebels put the captured footage in a secret place on YouTube. They also said they'd recovered a special identity card belonging to an Iranian battlefield commander. It allowed him to carry weapons and travel with armed guards anywhere in Syria. Such permits, the rebels said, are only issued to important regime personnel. Both of them caught up in a vicious conflict on foreign soil. It's a story of life and death and the hidden reality of a battle fought in the shadows. Iran denies sending military forces to support Assad, but this film is proof of the Ayatollah's secret war in Syria. Government air base near Damascus in Syria. Boarding the helicopter flight is this man, Hadi Barbani. He's a 30-year-old filmmaker from Iran. It's his second trip to Syria, and he's on a sensitive assignment. He's making a film on behalf of Iran's elite revolutionary guards. Aleppo in northern Syria. This section of the war-ravaged city is under the control of the Assad regime. And here is Hadi again, in footage filmed by one of his colleagues. But filming in Syria's civil war is a hazardous occupation. In September, a group of Snell 
Ismail Haidari, born in Amul, northern Iran, is a veteran commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guards. But were the rebels telling the truth, or was this an elaborate hoax? Broadcasting house in London, the headquarters of the BBC. A small team of journalists is examining all of the captured video. It seems to have been shot in northern Syria over a period of about three to four days in late August this year. Accents, uniforms, equipment and local landmarks have all been analysed by experts from the BBC's Persian and Arabic services. Everything in the footage points to its authenticity. We've heard a lot that Iran's revolutionary